party people and welcome to Idea Fire TV episode number two. Today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn data export and how to get your connections contact details off of LinkedIn and use that data for a variety of different things. There's a couple things you might want to do and there's a couple things you absolutely do not want to do. Uh, let's start with what you absolutely do not want to do. You do not want to take all of these email addresses that you now have in this LinkedIn export connection file and send a mass email blast to these people. You'll get marked as spam, your email address will get flagged, and bad things will happen. Do not do that, okay? What you do want to do is segment these email addresses and people they're connected to into different industries or uh, verticals or niches and send a targeted email campaign to small groups of those people with a very targeted message and a very clear call to action, okay? It should hit a landing page or it should hit some type of product page or something like that, okay? There's many other magical things you can do with this data, um, such as create custom audiences on Facebook, create lookalike audiences from those custom audiences on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, once you have over a thousand contacts and email addresses, you can upload those to Google Ads and use what's called customer match. That will allow you to serve your ads to uh, those people's email addresses as well as people that look like them, who um, show different behavior, visit certain websites, have certain cookies stored in their browser. So again, this data is incredibly powerful. If you wanna know other ways you can use this data or you have questions about how all of this works, how to do it, what's right, what's wrong, uh, let me know. You can email me at tv at ideafire.com. So let me show you how this tool works. It is incredibly easy and it can only be done from the LinkedIn desktop feed, okay? So that's where I'm at. I'm at the main home feed of LinkedIn, okay? I am first gonna click on my profile picture up here in the top right where it says me going to zoom in a little bit for you guys. Uh, I'm then going to go to settings and privacy. Okay. Once I'm in settings and privacy, you'll see a left hand menu here. I'm going to click on data privacy. I'm then going to click on this option here. Get a copy of your data. Okay. Once you get here, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Want something in particular connections. Okay. So again, you can download all of your data if you'd like, but for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna show you how to get your connections and all their contact data, okay? So you click on this radio button, want something in particular, then you check connections, you click request archive. Once you do that, you'll get an email that looks like this. It'll say your LinkedIn data archive fast file is ready for you. That's because you only selected connections. If you select all your data, it'll come in two emails and two downloads. But again, we just selected uh, connections. So you wait 24 hours, I obviously already did this. Uh, and this is the email you get. When you click this link, it'll take you to LinkedIn. It'll allow you to download a zip file that looks like this, connections, LinkedIn data export, and you unzip that and you get a Excel file with all of your connections data. What does that look like? Let me show you. So here you are right here. First name, last name, LinkedIn profile URL email address if provided, company, position, and the date you connected with them on LinkedIn. So again, this is an incredibly powerful tool. Now, it goes without saying, the more LinkedIn connections you have, the more powerful this tool becomes. For example, personally, I have about 12,250 LinkedIn connections. So that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people's contact information that I can use for all of the different things I explained earlier. So again, this is why I encourage friends, colleagues, clients, and everyone else to connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn. Again, it's all about who you know, right? And the quality of these connections is important too. Don't just connect with random people. Connect with people in your industry who you might get insight from, tips, resources, or specifically, people who could be potential clients or customers of yours, right? So again, connect with people regularly and this list will become more and more powerful for you and your business. Now, as I always like to do in these episodes, I will be reviewing a beer, 
liquor or wine and giving you guys some feedback on it in case you want to try it yourself. Today we are going to be tasting the New Belgium Voodoo Ranger Experimental IPA. Now I have some misgivings about this beer just because I'm not a super heavy IPA drinker. I like citrus IPAs and hazy IPAs uh, the most, but we'll see how this fares. Again, this is the New Belgium Voodoo Ranger Series Experimental IPA, okay? Looks a little bit hazy, honestly. I don't know what the experimental means, but we're gonna find out. So, let's see. Hopefully it's not too hoppy, because again, I'm more of a hazy IPA man, believe it or not, even with the jabroni tail man bun. This is true. All right, let's see. It smells citrusy. Okay, this is this is boding well. All right, let's give it a little whistle, whistle whirl. Try and get some of that foam out of there. Okay, let's see what we're working with here. Ooh, I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, that is definitely hazy. Definitely hazy. Big fan of this one. Yeah, I'll give it a mm, 7.2, I would say. Uh, New Belgium is out of Fort Collins, Colorado, and that's one of my favorite breweries, uh, one of my favorite and first Colorado beers I tried was that tire by New Belgium. I had to double check. Yep. Affirmative. Hard 7.2. New Belgium Voodoo Ranger Experimental IPA. Be sure to tune in next time when I talk about the Ray-Ban Stories video recording and photo sunglasses made by Ray-Ban. These are an awesome piece of hardware from Ray-Ban in collaboration with Meta. And they also have speakers so that you can use Bluetooth to talk to people on the phone. There's also a touch panel on the side, so I'll get much deeper into these. Self-charging case, Ray-Ban stories in our next episode. So if you're interested in that, make sure you tune in next time.